Hello, this is Ms. Kay and welcome to your first Science Video Lecture for Hildegard Summer HBL program. So today we are going to talk about science process skills. So first, what are science process skills? By definition, science process skills are skills used to investigate and gain knowledge about the natural world. So ito yung mga skills na ginagamit natin to answer and solve simple everyday questions and problems that we have about science. For example, paano ba namumungal isang puno? Ano bang process ang nangyayari doon? So we use those skills, the science process skills, to answer those kind of questions. Another question, but, uh, what if I put different objects in uh, in water? Sino ba ang magsisink? Sino ba ang mag-flow? So we use science process skills to answer those kinds of questions. So next slide, how many science process skills are there? So the basic science process skills, there are six basic science process skills, namely observing, communicating, classifying, measuring, inferring, and predicting. However, I want to add another one that is comparing and contrasting because I think that this skill is important para naman alam lang students how to compare and contrast different things by using their observed characteristics. So, what are those skills? So, explain natin yan isa isa. So, ayan, let's talk about the first science process skill, the observing. So, what is observing? Observing is a process of gathering information about the objects or events in your natural surrounding. So, isipin nyo, ano yung mga science subjects nyo ngayon? How do you gather information? You first observe the object, right? For example, you're given a fruit. It's an orange. How do you observe its characteristics? You use your different senses. You smell it. You describe what you see, its color, its shape. You taste it. Is it sweet? Is it sour? So, yeah. You use your senses to observe. Pero hindi lang yon. So, there are two types of observation. We have, we have the quantitative and the qualitative observation. So, ayan. Yeah. Ano si qualitative observation? Si qualitative observation daw, it involves the use of our senses. So, meaning the sense of sight, the sense of hearing, the sense of smell, the sense of touch, and the sense of taste. So, we use our eyes, ears, nose, skin, and tongue for observ observing the qualitative characteristics of an object. So, how do we use our eyes? Siyempre, i-observe mo ano ba yung nakita mo? Ano ba yung size niya? Ano ba yung color niya? Ano ba yung shape niya? Saan ba siya gawa? Lahat ng pwede mo i-observe using your eyes, o oh, ayan, pwede mo yung ilagay as your data. Next, how do you observe using your ears? Kung ano yung narinig mo about your uh, the object that you're observing, yun ang pwede mong gamitin as data. Paano po? So, for example, a bell. Oh, pwede mong ilagay kung ano yung sound ng bell na nagagawa. Or, for example, isang object meron ka, ano bang sound na nagagawa niya kapag pinukpok mo siya sa ibang object? Does it make a sound? Or wala pa rin siyang sound na nagagawa? So, pwede yan. Next is, how do we observe using our nose? Kung ano yung naamoy natin sa isang object, pwede mo siyang ilagay as your observation. Mabaho ba? Mabango ba sa ilong? Wala ba siyang amoy? So, yun. Pwede mo yun ilagay as your data. Next, the sense of touch. Paano ba? Ano ba ang feel nito kapag itinouch ko? Hard ba siya? Soft ba siya? Mainit ba siya? Malamig? Pagkatapos bang lagyan ko siya ng ganitong bagay, lalamig na siya? Mainit ba siya? Rough ba siya? Smooth ba yung surface niya? So, yun. Kung ano yung natatouch mo or na-feel mo dun sa object na yun, you can put it as a qualitative observation. And the last one, using your senses, your sense of taste. How do you observe using that? Ano ba yung lasa niya? Matamis, maalat, bitter, or uh, sour, maasim. So, yun. Pwede mo siyang ilagay. Okay? So, so, next punta naman tayo kay quantitative observation. Sabi dito si quantitative observation daw, they, you observe using numbers and quantities. 
For example, sa isang classroom, you observe by numbers. You observe how many chairs do you have. Siguro sa classroom nyo, meron 24 chairs. That is a quantitative observation. May nakita kang limang holen sa baba. That is a quantitative observation because you use numbers and quantities to observe. Okay? So, for example, we have there are five plastic chairs in the middle of the court. So, your observation here, it's quantitative because gumamit ka ng number. That is number five. Okay? Five plastic chairs. Okay? So, ayan. Kung malino na tayo sa observing as a process skill, punta na tayo sa next process skill which is comparing. Ito na. Diba sabi ko kanina, idadagdag ko to so that yung mga students is they know how to compare okay, using what they've observed. Sabi dito, si comparing and contrasting is used after making an observation. So, tama yan. Comparing the data gathered can be helpful in knowing the similarities and differences of different things. So, ayan. Ginagamit daw natin si comparing para malaman saan sila parehas at saan sila magkaiba. Okay? So, yung unang gagawin nyo is observe the, the two objects separately and then you compare the data that you gathered. Okay? So, paano sila naging similar? For example, meron kang dalawang fruit and you want to compare. So, you observe muna siya and then after getting the data or your observations, ipagko-compare mo naman saan sila parehas, saan sila magkaiba. So, how are they similar? How are they different? So, let's try this one. As you can see in the picture, there are two tables, right? The table on the left is a wooden table and the table on the right is a plastic table. How are they similar? Pareha sila kasi pareha silang table, pareha sila ng function. Pinagagamitan sila para pagpatungan ng objects. Different naman sila because magkaiba yung material kung saan sila gawa. Yung isa is made of wood, yung isa naman is made of plastic because it's a wooden table and a plastic table. So, yan. Yan ang example on how to compare using what you've observed about the object. Okay? So, later on in your lessons, mas palalalimin pa natin ang inyong kalaman about comparing. Okay? So, yan. How are they similar? How are they different? So, and explain na natin yan kanina. Next, punta naman tayo kay communicating. Ano daw po si communicating? Communicating is a skill on precise presentation or reporting of the data gathered. We communicate verbally or in written form or by drawing pictures. So, science, a common method for communicating or by using tables, charts, graphs, or diagrams. So, tatandaan nyo, pag sinabi natin communicating, it's presenting your data. Okay? Either you communicate your data or you present your data na sasabihin mo lang. So, pwede example, I can see that there is an orange on top of the table. So, yan. Presentation. Communication through verbal presentation. Okay? Pwede naman in written form. Isulat mo sa papel. Ano ba yung nakita mo? Ano ba yung nakita mo dun sa observation mo? Or, you can draw the pictures. I-draw mo ano bang nangyari? Paano bang naging itsura? And also, there are common methods naman Sa science na ginagamit, siguro familiar kayo dito, you have, uh, we have tables, charts, graphs, or diagrams. So, explain natin yan. So, first, we have the data table. Siguro, nakikita nyo to tuwing nag-experiment kayo. So, meron yan. Meron yung table, different column and rows. So, doon nyo ilalagay kung ano yung mga nangyari. Dito sa slide na to, makikita nyo, po, uh, ang experiment na ginawa dito is, Di ba familiar kayo yung lalagyan ng Mentos yung soft drinks? So, dito gumamit siya ng dalawang kind of soft drinks. We have the Coke and the Sprite. Tapos, gusto nyo malaman ano bang mangyayari or gano'n ba kataas yung magiging explosion ng soft drinks kapag isang Mentos lang yung nilagay? Kapag dalawa naman or kapag tatlo? 
So, ayan. So, et, dito sa table na to, dito nyo na i-present yung data kung paano or gaano kataas ang naging explosion ng different mentos na nilagay. Okay? Next naman, we have the bar graph. Ginagamit natin to to present numeric data. Dito sa graph na to, kung makikita nyo, the question is, do you want to include educational videos in your daily lessons? So, meron dyan choices which is tatlo. And as you can see, makikita nyo dyan kung gano karami yung nag-answer ng yes, gano karami nag-answer ng maybe, gano karami nag-answer ng no. So, yan. Pwede nyo gamitin si bar graph para makita nyo agad saan yung answer na pinakamarami. Saan yung answer na pinakakonte. Yan, ha? Next, we have the pie chart. Si pie chart, ginagamit natin siya para rin siyang purpose ni bar graph, pero in a different form nga, which is naka-pie chart. So, yan. Makikita nyo saan mas malaking color ang mas marami and then mas maliit na color is yung mas konti. As a number of female and male grade 10 students, kung makikita nyo, mas marami si male and mas medyo konti kumpara kay male si female. Okay? So, that's how we use the pie chart. Next naman si Venn diagram. We use Venn diagram usually for comparing objects or comparing to different things. In this instance, ang pinag-compare natin and pinag-contrast si mammals and si fish. Si Venn diagram, nakikita nyo, lagi nyo natandaan, pag si Venn diagram may dalawang circle or may tatlong circle, ay nahanapin nyo yung nasa gitna, yun yung pagkakaparehas nila, and then yung wala sa gitna is yun yung pagkakaiba-iba nila. So, ayan, makikita nyo naman yung pagkakaiba-iba ni mammals at ni fish. Si mammal, warm-blooded. Si fish daw, cold-blooded. Pero, sa gitna, pareho silang vertebrates and meron silang skeleton. Okay? So, that's communicating. So, our third process skill. Ngayon, punta tayo naman kay classifying. Si classifying, skill daw na nag involve ng grouping subjects based on particular property or criteria. So, ang gagawin mo lang kay classifying, i-group mo lang siya according to a criteria. For example, if you're given a class of students and i-classify nyo sila according to their gender. So, yung isa, ipunta mo, uh, yung, hanapin mo yung mga female and hanapin mo yung mga male. So, if I classify your class according to their gender. Pwede naman, i-classify nyo sila according to yung, yun nga, kung amal ba, fish, amphibian, reptile, or bird. So, yan, classification. If you're given a list of animals, pwede mo i-classify sila as a bird, as a mammal, as an amphibian. So, that's how you classify. You look at their common characteristics and you refer to the criteria that is given. Okay? Next, punta naman tayo kay measuring. Si measuring is a skill that involves using numbers to describe the measurable property of an object. So, ito na. Minsan, sa mga tanong natin sa science, kailangan natin mag-experiment. And sometimes, mga experiment na ginagamit natin, we have to measure to know the result or the data. So, yan. Ang minimeasure natin yung mga numeric measurable property lang ng objects na meron tayo. So, that can be the length, the mass or the weight, the volume, temperature, or time. Okay? So, sige, tignan nga natin. Si length, minimeasure daw natin siya. So, when we measure, we use different kinds of tools, right? So, ayan. Punta tayo kay length. Si length, when you measure siya, pwede tayong gumamit ng ruler or a meter stick. <laughs> or, kung gusto naman, meron naman kayo sa bahay, you have measuring tape or medida. Or, kung meron naman si tatay, meron. So, me measuring tape din, pero gamit ng mga carpenters. So, ayan. When you measure niya ang length or kung gano'ng kahaba, ang isang bagay. 
Next, volume. We measure volume kung siya ay rectangular object. Pwede natin siyang i-measure by getting its length, width, height. Length, width, and height. Okay? Pwede natin yun i-compute. However, kung liquid naman yan, pwede natin siyang i-measure using a beaker or a graduated cylinder. Okay? Next naman, how do we measure mass or weight? So, we use a weighing scale, a spring balance, or a beam balance. So, yan yung mga usual na ginagamit to measure mass or weight. Ah, ayan. So, yan. Lagi nyo yung tatandaan because, di ba, ginagamit din natin yan minsan tuwing nag experiment tayo sa science. So, that is measuring. Getting the numeric property of an object. Okay? Now, punta tayo kay inferring. Ano daw si inferring? It is the process of drawing an idea or conclusion based on an observation or statement. Sa madaling sabi, you conclude what you've seen. Okay? So, first, bigay tayo ng example. Sa picture na to, sa gilid, what can you see? So, you can see a snail on top of a cabbage. The cabbage has numerous irregular holes. And you infer by making a conclusion. What happened? Your inference can be the snail is searching for food. Kaya siya nandun sa taan because it's searching for food. Oh, that's, one, that's conclusion number one. Number two is the snail caused the holes in the cabbage. That can happen also. Diba? Kasi it's looking for food. Kaya ngayon, ginamit na niya yung cabbage as food. Kaya siya nagkaroon ng numerous holes. So, that's another conclusion that you can make from that picture. Another one. Let's look at this picture. There is a man helping another man to walk. And you can see, meron pa silang, meron pang dalawang tao nun dun sa likod. And it first that we can make is, the man in the maroon shirt is injured. Siyempre, mahirap naman maglakad kung nang igaganyan ka ng ibang tao kung hindi ka injured, di ba? So, what we can conclude is the man in the maroon shirt is injured and they were playing before the injury happened. Yeah. So, based on the picture that we can see, that is some conclusions that we can make. So, lagi niyong tatandaan, inferring is making conclusions about what you observe. Okay? And last but not the least, we have predicting. Predicting is guessing the possible outcome of a future event based on current evidences or prior knowledge. Predictions are often written in if-then statements. Ito yung makikita mo na yung action and then ipipredict mo yung mangyayari sa kanya. For example, if I leave the house early, oh, imagine mo, alis ka ng bahay nyo, oh, ano, i-predict mo anong mangyayari sa'yo, you will arrive, then you will arrive at school before a class starts. Another one, if I don't water the plants every day, then they will die. The statements after then, the word then, yun na yung prediction na ginagawa mo. Okay? So, kung umalis ka sa bahay nyo, you can predict na dadating ka sa school nyo before your class starts. Or, kung hindi mo i-water yung plants everyday, you can predict na mamamatay sila dahil hindi mo i-winater. Okay? That is predicting. Another example. Give, uh, imagine this situation. You're going to put different materials in a container with water. So, which will float and which will sink? Predict your answer. Which of the following will sink and which will float? I can predict that the, mar the marble will sink, the styrofoam cup will float, the coin will sink, the leaf will float, the screw will sink, and the tissue will float. So, that's how you predict. I-imagine mo ano na ang mangyayari kapag nangyari yung situation na to. Okay? Ginagamit na natin yun sa science, di ba? Pwedeng uh, ibibigay na ng teacher nyo yung gagawin nyo. Ipapa-imagine na sa inyo kung anong mangyayari. And then, ipapa-predict na sa inyo anong possible na mangyayari. 
And then you experiment. Tapos titignan nyo, tama ba yung prediction nyo? O mali. And then, what happened? Bakit tama? Bakit mali? And then you explain. Okay? So that's how you predict as a pro science process is skill. So yeah, to recap, the science process skills that we talk about today are observing, comparing and contrasting, communicating, classifying, measuring, inferring, and predicting. So, umpisa natin sa una. Observing, you use your senses or you count the number of the observed characteristics sa ino observe nyo objects. Compare, so there are two objects that you're going to compare and you compare using their observed characteristics. Number three, communicate. You present your data in different ways. Either i-present nyo, sasabihin nyo verbally, in written form, or in drawing. Okay? Classify. Oh, I-sort mo yung materials into a criteria. Sort them according to their size. Malaki ba? O oh, ilagay mo, small, medium, large, XL, triple XL. So, yan. Pwede mo i-sort yan. You sort objects according to a criteria. That is classifying. Next, measuring. You measure or hanapin mo yung mga numeric characteristics ng isang bagay. So, you measure the length, width, volume, height, temperature, time. Basta kung anong mga measure mo, i-measure mo lang. And we use uh, tools to measure those kinds of characteristics. Inferring. Ito naman, yung magkukonclude ka base sa nakita mo. Okay? You're given a situation. Ano kaya yung nangyari doon? And lastly, predicting. i mo ano na ang mangyayari kapag may ginawa kang action. Okay? So, that's the science process skills. And... Yeah, that's the end of our lecture. So, sana may natutunan kayo. Uh, so, please ask questions sa inyong mga parents or guardians if you don't understand. Or you can go back to the previous, uh, to the first part of our video kung may hindi man kayo naintindihan. So, yan na. If you have, uh, if you have, if you don't have further questions, you can now proceed to the worksheet number one. Para uh, nakalagay sa inyong HBL Learning Kit. And yeah, thank you for listening. Bye-bye!